Okay. Most bacterial integrity of the cell. Excellent target for antibiotic. Most bacterial. Okay, gram positive and uh, gram negative cell walls. As you already know, uh, gram positive cell wall contains peptidoglycan in more content as compared to the gram negative cell wall. Okay, uh, so there is a difference in the composition of gram positive as well as gram negative cell wall. The diagram given here is a gram positive envelope is from bacillus lacaniformis which is an gram positive one and the gram negative one is of aquaspirillum serpens which is given here and the peptidoglycan layer or the murine layer okay this one is a peptidoglycan and murine layer okay and uh, this one are, is an outer membrane given here okay then comes a plasma membrane okay then comes a plasma membrane okay and uh, here given is in gram negative cell wall where you can clearly see the amount of amount of peptoglycan is very low in the gram negative bacteria as compared to bac gram positive bacteria which has a which has a higher peptidoglycan content so starting with the process of the biosynthesis of peptidoglycan it starts with the synthesis of udp energy and udp nm okay and what do you mean by udp it is uridyl phosphate it is uridyl phosphate and what is energy n acetyl glutamic acid and nm n acetyl muramic acid okay so uh, let us discuss first uh, about the udp energy okay it is formed from the fructose 6 phosphate it is formed from the fructose 6 phosphate and converted into glucosamine 1 phosphate and in the presence of acetyl coa which will be converted into coa and n acetyl glucosamine 1 phosphate will be formed and finally with the help of utp with the help of utp phosphate will be released and udp energy will be formed okay udp energy will be formed okay uh, this one is a short overview of the process of the formation of udp energy which is uridyl diphosphate and acetyl glucosamine and now moving forward with the udp energy from udp energy in the presence of nadph and uh, pep means phosphoenol pyruvate okay udp nam is formed okay udp nam is formed what is udp nam uridyl phosphate and acetyl muramic acid okay and after the conversion of the udp nam okay sequentially amino acids are added okay sequentially one by one amino acids are added to the udp nam okay forming a pentapeptide okay so there is addition of five amino acids sequentially huh. uh, there which amino acid will be added may vary according to the type of bacteria okay there are some different amino acids with different bacteria in a general and next one is a, a important uh, carrier molecule we can say okay a bactopino and m bactopinol nam okay this one is a structure of the bactopinol this one is a structure of a bactopinol and it's a 55 carbon isoprene derived alcohol that is connected to the n acetyl muramic acid by the pyrophosphate by the pyrophosphate okay now uh, Going forward with the process of peptidoglycan cell wall synthesis, okay. As in the first part of the process, we have already seen that UDP derivatives are made, okay. Which are they? UDP NM and UDP NAG, okay. In the second step, in the second step, five amino acids are added, forming NM pentapeptide forming nm pentapeptide okay now comes the third one okay now comes the third one 
एन एम पेंटा पेप्टाइड इज ट्रांसफर्ड इज ट्रांसफर्ड टू द बैक्टोप्रिन फॉस्फेट जनरेटिंग लिपिड वन जनरेटिंग लिपिड वन एंड दे आर ज्वाइंड बाय द पायरोफॉस्फेट बॉन्ड ओके यू कैन क्लियरली सी द पायरोफॉस्फेट बॉन्ड ओके बैक्टोप्रिनो एंड एन एम पेंटा पेप्टाइड आर ज्वाइंड बाय द by the pyrophosphate bond okay and then in the next steps udp nag will be converted into udp okay will be converted into udp okay and this serves as an interbridge okay and glycyl trn molecules but not in chromosomes interbridge formation occurs at the cytoplasmic side of the membrane it occurs at the cytoplasmic side of the membrane okay now in the lipid 2 okay energy from here will be convert converted into will be joining the nm okay will be joining is nm okay which is joined with the bacteriobinol phosphate with the help of pyrophosphate bonds and this whole molecule with the help of pectorpinol okay where lipid 2 is flipped across the membrane by the enzyme phipase okay this pectorpinol complex with nm energy as well as pentapeptide will be passed on to the other side of the membrane okay for the side of the membrane with the help of the enzyme phipase with the help of the enzyme phipase okay and now moving further with the process the energy nm pentapeptide is attached to the growing chain of the nascent growing chain to the nascent peptidoglycan chain that is held at the membrane by a bacteriopenol membrane and this increases chain length by one repeat unit okay as you can see clearly let's let us assume this is a chain of peptidoglycan okay which is being formed now what will happen this chain will get attached okay will get attached to the system and bacteriophenol bactopenol will be freed again okay bacteriophenol phosphate will be freed again and nm energy pentapeptide will join the peptidoglycan layer forming a new layer of the peptidoglycan okay and after bactopenol is released okay after the bactopenol is released this bactopenol now moves back again to the cytoplasm moves back again to the cytoplasm and loses and loses one phosphate becoming a bactopenol phosphate now which can be again reused for the continuation of new formation of peptidoglycan biosynthesis and uh, the peptidoglycan peptide cross links between peptidoglycan chains are formed by the transpeptidation are formed by the transpeptidation now further process okay how are they joined okay once the chain is added or a unit of nm energy pentapeptide is added how are they joined they are joined by the transpeptidation process they are joined by the transpeptidation process okay i am repeating the whole process again okay process starts with the formation of uh, derivatives of nm and nag which are n-acetyl muramic acid and n-acetyl glucosamine where udp is a uridyl diphosphate uridyl phosphate or okay and uh, upon the formation of udp and nm okay five amino acids are added sequentially five amino acids are added sequentially and moving further with the process in the presence of bactopenol in the cytoplasm side of the membrane okay uh, udp will be converted into U ump and bactopenol and nm pentapeptide will be formed and they are joined by the pyrophosphate bond they are joined by the pyrophosphate bond and moving further with the process udp energy now will be added 
and UDP will be again released and here NAM will join the vector pinol NAM pentameptide complex okay now this vector pinol complex will be further transferred to the another side of the membrane with the help of the enzyme flipase with the help of the enzyme flipase and this unit of NM energy pentapeptide will be will be added to the peptidoglycan chain forming a new new chain that is new chain will be formed and vector pinol will be again freed okay vector pinol will be again freed in the form of vector pinol diphosphate and again vector pinol for the further use will be again transported to the another side of the membrane where one phosphate bond will be removed and vector pinol phosphate will be formed okay so further uh, in the process this peptide, peptide cross links chains and peptidoglycan chains are formed by the transpeptidation process okay this is whole the whole of a process of the biosynthesis of the peptidoglycan biosynthesis of the peptidoglycan now uh, the process and uh, amino acid sequence may vary uh, according to the species there are also various other points okay for example when we are trying to study how antibiotics kills the bacteria as you know there are various antibiotics which can inhibit peptidoglycan biosynthesis okay in this diagram you can see uh, there are two examples given one of them is uh, vancomycin the another one is an bacitracin so vancomycin blocks step number six where uh, energy and pentapeptide is attached okay this will be blocked by the vancomycin and the bacitracin okay which blocks the transfer of bactopinol to the other, another side of the membrane okay another side of the membrane now moving further with the transpeptidation with the transpeptidation you can clearly see the differences between e coli and staphylococcus aureus peptidoglycan okay now in the case of uh, e coli with direct cross linking the typical of gram negative bacteria okay this one is a cross linking okay and you can see the systems here okay uh, in the case of staphylococcus which is in gram positive bacterium nm is as you all know n acetyl glucosamine okay Poly polysaccharide chains are drawn opposite to each other for the sake of the clarity and two chains lying side by side may be linked together okay now you can see where it gets attached in the case of staphylococcus okay they get attached with with the lysine on one side and another side will be aligned whereas it differs in the case of in the case of e coli whereas the process differs in the case of e coli okay so what is the role of uh, cytoskeleton in the cell wall synthesis okay there are also various enzymes okay which you will study more in your master degree okay so i am not going to discuss about the enzyme uh, about the genes and more no enzymes the scalo the skytokeletal structures formed by the mrebcd proteins control the cell shape by controlling the cell wall synthesis okay so these proteins mrebcd basically helps helps in controlling the shape okay of the cell by controlling the cell wall synthesis if there are any mutations okay if there are any mutations which lead to defects in the bacterial cell are directly associated with the defect in the cell wall synthesis okay so if there is any problem in the shape or whatever the problems or any due to the uh, mutation or it may be spontaneous or it may be even induced mutation whatever it may be okay due to one or the another reason the cell wall has some different shape than regular it can be due to the defect in the cell wall synthesis and multiple mutations in pbp genes can convert rod shaped e coli and bacillus into round or branched cells okay so a multiple mutations in this gene okay pbp genes can convert 
rod shape and bacillus subtilis E. coli and bacillus subtilis into round or even branch cells. Similarly, another uh, mutation in tag F gene which is basically involved in tachoic acid okay, which converts bacillus subtilis into round cells into round cells as you I hope you remember where tachoic acid is present uh, in which type of bacteria. Okay. Now, patterns you must have already studied these patterns of uh, cellular synthesis during uh, your semester one, okay, where how the cell divides. Okay. Uh, cellular synthesis patterns, patterns of new cell wall synthesis in growing and dividing bacteria, the Streptococci and some other bacteria road shape, okay. The zones are growth in turquoise and the actual situation is more complex than indicated because cells can begin divide again before the first division is completed. So, you are so just an uh, uh, introductory type of uh, pattern of the cell wall synthesis. Okay? Now, you can clearly see here the septal region, okay? the cell it starts to divide okay for the divides and finally two different types of cells will be formed where here the new cell wall you can clearly see okay the new cell wall here you can clearly see okay this is how cell wall, wall synthesis works okay now uh, there was a problem while playing a video okay i'm going to playing play the video again. most bacterial cell walls contain peptidoglycan this structure is essential for maintaining the structural integrity of the cell. Peptidoglycan is a structure that is unique to bacterial cells. This combination of essential and unique makes peptidoglycan an excellent target for antibiotics. The precursor subunit of peptidoglycan, UDPN acetylmeramic acid, is synthesized in the cytoplasm. A lactyl group is added to carbon number 3 of UDPN acetyl glucosamine to form UDPN acetyl meramic acid. Five amino acids are added sequentially to UDPNAM to form a pentapeptide side chain. Special adding enzymes are used to add these amino acids so that tRNA and ribosomes are not involved. In the case of Escherichia coli, L-alanine is added first, then D-glutamic acid, then mesodiaminopamelic acid. Finally, the dipeptide, D-alanyl, D-alanine is added to form the pentapeptide side chain. The NAM pentapeptide is transferred from UDP to bactoprenol phosphate at the membrane surface. Then NAG is transferred from UDP NAG to the bactoprenol NAM pentapeptide to form the final disaccharide pentapeptide precursor. The completed NAM NAG precursor is transported across the membrane to its outer surface by the bactoprenol carrier lipid. The disaccharide pentapeptide is then transferred to the growing end of the peptidoglycan chain to lengthen it by one repeat unit. As the bactoprenol pyrophosphate returns to the inside of the cell membrane, one phosphate is removed by a pyrophosphatase, leaving a bactoprenol phosphate to accept another NAM pentapeptide. Finally, the peptide side chains are linked together by transpeptidation reactions, forming peptide bonds. In E. coli, the free amino group of diaminopamelic acid is linked to the carboxyl group of the subterminal D-alanine, releasing the terminal D-alanine. Other enzymes remove the terminal D-alanine from side chains that are not cross-linked. Okay, uh, everyone please join the